Now, your forecast first from KARK4, your weather authority. A warm front crossing the state has brought the three H's of summer back to Arkansas. Hazy, hot, and humid, and it's going to be a warm and muggy evening and overnight for the state. With temperatures only falling to the 60s to the mid 70s for Little Rock specifically, we're looking for partly cloudy skies through sunset, 83 as the sun goes down. And for your drive in Wednesday morning, look for mostly cloudy skies and 68. KARK 4 News at 5 starts now. Coming up, new information as police accuse a man of shaking his own baby daughter to death. We've got the arrest affidavit. Next, a major job announcement. We knew that we were a bit of a disadvantage. But it didn't come without a fight. How the Russellville Economic Development Commission snagged 80 jobs. Plus, it's fall, and that means it's flu shot season. Still ahead, we have the latest flu shot clinic dates, and who needs to get that shot ASAP. Now, from the station you count on for local news that matters. This is KARK 4 News at 5. Good evening to you. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Jessica Dean. Well, good evening, everybody. I'm Bob Clausen. It's good to have you along. New details tonight about the four-month-old baby who died, police say, at the hands of her own father. We were the first to tell you about this story, Presley Faith Hunt, last night. She died at Arkansas Children's Hospital June 22nd. Tonight, KRK 4's Lauren Trigger has more information about her injuries, and Lauren, these injuries were, to say the least, pretty severe. That's right, Bob. Doctors say that Presley suffered from abusive head trauma. She had swelling and bleeding on her brain as well as other severe injuries. She even had a tear on her eye. Now, doctors say these injuries are consistent with shaken baby syndrome. Investigators say after reviewing the medical examiner's report that they just received Friday, they had enough to charge Presley's father with capital murder. This is not an easy case um, for no one, by no means. Though used to dealing with murder cases, investigators say the death of four-month-old Presley Hunt especially tough. It's even harder when it's a small, small child, a defenseless child like this. It, uh, it really hits home. Bryant Police Sergeant Todd Krausen says they were called to Arkansas Children's Hospital after learning of Presley's injuries. They say 23-year-old Devin Hunt was at a home on Independence Drive in Bryant June 21st, alone with Presley and his other two-year-old son. Hunt at first told an investigator he left the room for just a moment, heard Presley cry, and came back to see the two-year-old standing over her. Doctors at Children's told police the sibling couldn't have been the one to cause the severe injuries. Now, police say before and since his arrest Monday morning, Hunt has been silent. He hasn't been wanting to give any statements. Police still puzzling over exactly what happened. Hunt had just finished boot camp for the National Guard. He and his wife filed for divorce shortly after Presley's death. Do we believe he planned to do this? I hope not. Hunt's attorney continued to maintain his client's innocence Tuesday, but police say they, like many others, just want to know why. There's only one person that can answer that, and he's sitting in jail right now. And he is still in jail right now without bond at this moment. He does have a bond hearing set for tomorrow. Now, an attorney for Presley's mom did send me a statement today over the phone. She told me that they have faith in God and in the legal system that justice will prevail in this case. Obviously, just a great tragedy. So sad for the family and the community. And, of course, you can count on us to continue to cover this case for you. Guys, back to you. All right, Lauren, thank you very much. Now to an update to a story we first brought you last night at 10 o'clock. A North Little Rock man behind bars accused of stabbing another man to death. North Little Rock police arrested 19-year-old Devante Cooney on first-degree murder charges Monday night. Police say witnesses saw Cooney stab Sidney Rufus several times. Rufus was taken to a hospital where he then later died. A thief in Monticello uses a gun and an excuse to rob a local motel. Police say a thief followed a clerk into the office of the Economy Inn on Gain Street asking for change. When the clerk opened the cash door, the thief showed a black handgun, then grabbed the cash. That, less, that suspect was last seen running toward Highway 424, and Monticello police ask you to call them if you have any information. The four members of Occupy Little Rock who chose not to leave their campsite appeared in court this morning. Their trial was supposed to begin today, but the city asked for a continuance. The date is now set for January 23rd. In May, the Occupy camp near downtown post office was cleared out to make way for a Riverfest parking. 
Four people were arrested for defying the order to leave that site. A mistrial declared in a forgery trial against a South Arkansas mayor. Gold Mayor Ernest Nash faces forgery and obstruction of government operations. No word yet on what happens next, but we will, of course, keep you posted. And a woman accused of stealing from the city of Malvern enters a not guilty plea. Malvern Waterworks office manager Kanitha Henson is accused of stealing $200,000 from the city. This came to light after involvement from state police and a legislative audit. Henson facing felony theft charges now. Suspects in White County dump the body of a suicide victim, then steal his truck. Deputies found the body of Efren Beltron on Safely Road. They determined Beltron committed suicide. Then deputies say Austin Flynn and Michael Hollingshead pulled Beltron out of the truck and stole it. Authorities arrested both men. They're now searching for Levi Flynn and Stephen Earl Raymond for questioning in that case. If you have any information about them or the case, you're asked to contact the White County Sheriff's Office. And you think your commute home from work is kind of rough? Count your blessings. Take a look at this. Traffic backing up for five miles on I-40 westbound near Conway. After that, a big rig goes into Lake Conway. So when a big rig goes into the lake, guess what? It's got to come out. And that takes time and needs a lot of space. State troopers are discouraging trucks and with wide loads from traveling through the area right now. Other motorists may want, motorists may want to consider alternate routes as well. And if you're expecting anyone home for dinner that's traveling that way, they're going to be late. 80 jobs will be added at the ConAgra plant in Russellville. This good news comes just four months after hundreds were laid off at Batesville's ConAgra plant. KOK 4's Jocelyn Tovar here with details on how Russellville snagged these new jobs. Jocelyn, how'd they do it? Bob Russellville's City Council approved a tax incentive that made expansion in Russellville just too sweet for ConAgra to pass up. The ConAgra Corporation has been a staple in Russellville. In cementing the company's position in the community, news it'll be expanding operations. 80 jobs and, and sometimes might not sound like a, a lot. Believe me, it's a lot, especially in the economy we're currently faced with. During these tough times, every little bit helps, and these jobs will benefit the community, says Chamber President Jeff Pipkin, who says Russellville had to fight for the ConAgra expansion. Create an environment uh, for business in this area that, where they can succeed and prosper. Because, you see, ConAgra was deciding between three different states as far as where the expansion would go. We knew that we were a bit of a disadvantage with our competition when it comes to property taxes. So, along with a state bond of $100 million, Russellville City Council approved an additional incentive, a property tax break for the company. That's a 65% abatement for 15 years. But Pipkin points out taxpayers won't be picking up the tab. So, in his eyes, a win-win for the city of Russellville. Now, whether the employees laid off in Batesville are able to get these jobs isn't very clear. Pipkin says he does expect the jobs to be filled locally. Back to you. All right, Jocelyn, thanks very much. Balmel is adding another company to its prospering business park there. Midland announces it will open a state-of-the-art distribution center on spring, or in spring, rather, of 2013 on Sharkey Drive. The company, apparently the largest private supplier of medical and surgical supplies in the United States. Construction is expected to begin this fall. The center will create about 15 new jobs to start with. And flu season is upon us. That means it's time to get vaccinated. KERK 4's Deidre Wilson tells us doctors are urging people to get that flu shot early this year. Deidre, what's that all about? Hey, Jessica, well, yeah, you better get yours. The sooner the better. Doctors say don't wait around. This time of year, you may have the flu and not even know it. These are all signs the miserable flu season is near. We're seeing a very tiny low level of activity, almost undetectable, that we see every year. So it's time to take action. I do every year. I'm a nurse at the VA, so we have to have our flu shot. Are you planning on getting a flu shot? Yes, I am. Got to get a flu shot this year? Quite possibly. I'm thinking about it. The CDC highly recommends you do so, especially women who are pregnant. One reason, children under six months cannot get vaccinated. They have no protection unless they get it from mom. Children under a year of age have the highest death rate and complication rate. Wheeler says of the three different components, there are two new strains this year, but not to worry. There are expectations that our vaccines should be very active against the strains that will be in the community this year. While it remains to be seen whether this will be a harsh season for the flu, 
One thing is for sure, says Wheeler. Everybody can catch the flu and everybody can have serious consequences from influenza, including death. And by the way, it is safe for pregnant women to get vaccinated. The only catch is you have to get the injectable and not the nasal spray. Back to you in the studio. Deidre, thanks. And for more information on flu clinic dates across the state and when children will be vaccinated at their schools, you can go to our website, ArkansasMatters.com. They're out there. They jump, they bite. They just don't look nice at all. They passed your pet a lot. <laughs> look at that poor guy. And apparently it seems they're going to be a little bit worse this year. Still ahead, fleas invading your backyard. What vets are seeing in their clinics next. Plus. Start your engines there. We're going to head up to Fayetteville for the do's and don'ts of bikes, blues, and barbecue. And just when you thought it was safe to go outside, it's back. Summer-like temperatures will be in the forecast the next couple of days. Near 90 today in Little Rock after starting only in the mid-60s. But cooler weather is on the way. We'll let you know when to expect it and what to expect ahead of it in just a few minutes. This is KARK 4 News at 5 and High Definition with Bob Clawson. Jessica Dean and Chief Meteorologist Keith Monahan.